Uh, my name is Carl Hewitt. I'm an emeritus professor at MIT, and I've known Vint a long time. In fact, uh, TCPIP was one of the inspirations for the invention of something called the actor model of computation, which is a, a model of computation based purely on message passing that's becoming increasingly important. And I actually uh, kind of lost an argument with Vint in the early days, <laughs> but he's picked up on it later. Uh, namely, I thought that the internet should be based on message passing, with the packets being underneath for the messages. And instead, it ended up to be, it, instead it ended up, up to be first uh, uh, network connections, TCP, and then they put the, the packets underneath later on as a subsequent revision to that, and they never really got around to the messages until uh, 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 Vince has been working on some intergalactic thing. But uh, now the message passing has become increasingly important because it's going to be uh, face the latest challenge of the internet because we were all very idealistic. Vint, Bob Kahn, we were all thought that the, the internet would be the liberation of us all. And unfortunately now the internet threatens to enslave us all because of the massive government surveillance and the internet intruders. So we face a huge crisis now in the very, in the very structure of the internet itself, the philosophy of how we do things. It's also now become a huge threat to the economic viability of Silicon Valley because all the companies here, the U.S. companies, fall under the jurisdiction of the U.S. government. And their foreign operations also fall under the jurisdiction of the U.S. government. And people abroad just don't like that at all. <laughs> this is unacceptable, right? That the very infrastructure that we're using is under the jurisdiction of a foreign government. Certainly if that happened to the U.S., right? No, 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 that wouldn't that'd be acceptable at all. So we face this huge crisis as to what to do, and the companies are kind of helpless. They can't, you know, go against, the government says it's the law, and we're gonna put you in prison unless you do this. So we have a big decision to make. Can we change the government or face the economic consequences, which are going to be very, very bad indeed. So tell us um, the impact of your work today. Can, can you see a direct uh, connection? Yeah, it is connected through this message passing idea. You see, the idea is that just like uh, we always want to, in computer science, we always want to break things up into fixed size units. Like, for example, if you have a, a, a Word file on your computer, it's all broken up when it's inside the machine into 60, today 64-bit words. So we always break things up into things at the same size. And that's what we've done on the Internet with IP, what's called an Internet packet, which lies underneath TCP IP, is all the packets are the same fixed size. But then we have to make something out of that, something semantically meaningful, because semantically meaningful information doesn't come in fixed size bits, so we have to paste them together. So that was always the debate. Do we fit, paste them together in streams of information, like your video stream? Works perfectly well for your video stream. But it doesn't work so well for lots of other things. So we're kind of missing a level of abstraction in the Internet, namely the message level. And that's become crucial now because it's message passing is the way you deal asynchronously with other parts. The way you get performance out of the internet is there's no one global clock that beat, beat, beat. Instead, all the parts operate asynchronously and autonomously, and that's where all the performance comes from. When you were working on this, did you understand the profound impact this would have had later? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Tell we thought it was a cool thing. My to that. So yes, we, 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 we had no idea what the impact would be, uh, the overall impact, though, the societal impact. We knew what the impact that it had on us in terms of our local society, like when Jerry Saltzer invented email on CTSS, we thought that was cool. Now we could send messages to you. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. I could still send a message to Jerry, and he'd get it at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, and that was cool. And so we saw in increases in productivity in our own work, but we didn't realize that it would change the productivity of the whole planet. It would just ch completely change the culture of the whole planet. Incredible, incredible. How do we inspire kids to go on and do and carry on your work and your legacy uh, and, and the legacy of others? Um, see if you can incorporate my question into the answer if you, if yeah. you think it's good. Yeah, I think that our legacy 
is not the most important thing. I think that we really have to completely re re rethink the educational system. The kids are already on the case, okay? They are already using the phones. Like I was at a party, you know, a couple years ago, and two-year-old, you know, looked up the t looked down at her little, little, little iPhone, looked up at the computer, had a bright idea. She went up the phone, and she went like this to the TV, right? And she expected. <laughs> so they've already internalized a lot of this, okay? For better or for worse. In some cases, for worse. In Japan, there's now a special operation that the kids have uh, for repetitive uh, stress injury because they've been using their thumbs too much, texting each other. So the kids have got the inspiration. The question is, how do we change the educational system so that they really turn into scientists. This business of having people stand up in front of classes and yak on for hours at a time is just a crazy way. And what the internet is going to enable us to do is to completely change that, where everybody has their own pad, they work together in groups, and we old timers have to adapt ourselves, adapt ourselves to that new reality. Yeah, things back then were a lot more informal, and Vin has always been the same old guy that he has now. And now we've all acquired all these corporate responsibilities, there's big money at stake, and the question is, can we rise to the occasion of this crisis that we face in terms of the worldwide surveillance? Can we bring that once? Do, I think the job for the old timers is to help us surmount this crisis, because we have the knowledge and the ability to do that, we also now come with corporate constraints that are going to make it difficult and government constraints are going to make it difficult. But that is our challenge now.